So I'm going to show you today a plugin that I've been using recently. Now it's not a new plugin, but I've been told so much about it. I did use it a while ago, thought it was okay, thought it was a little bit deep, didn't want to get too involved. Then the more people I spoke to about it and the more people I got into, then I thought, okay, I'll give it a go because I don't like to change things too often. If you watch my channel, I don't like to keep changing, chopping and changing all the things that I use all the time. I like to learn things well and get the most out of them before I put them into my chain. I've got to work fast, I've got to work well, and I've got to be consistent to get really good mastered tracks for people all the time. So if I keep chopping and changing, I'm not going to get that consistency. I'm not going to understand what something's doing. So that's why I don't rush into things. This is really good. I really like it. I've been playing with it now for a couple of weeks, so I thought I'd share it with you on the channel. I think you should download it, I think you should give it a go, and tell me what you think in the comments, because I'm loving it. I can get, you know, yeah, I can get things mega loud with it, but that's really not totally what I'm after. I'm really after getting things sounding dynamic, and I don't want to hear a limiter. I want to hear, because basically, if I let something fly over zero um, on the meters, you're going to get distortions, you're going to get all kinds of stuff happening. So. I don't want that to happen, but sometimes I don't like the sound of crushing something through a limiter just to get level on it. And that's what this thing is really good at. It's really good at getting things loud without crushing it to death, which is what we all want from a limiter. I usually use the Pro L2 because that's always been my go-to for that reason. I think this is cleaner than the Pro L2. Sometimes the Pro L2 has got a sound to it, which is cool. And that's why you use certain limiters because they have a sound, some of them. So like the old Waves um, L2 had a brilliant sound to it, still does, really poppy sound. So sometimes I use that if I want that kind of poppy sound. But this seems really clean, sounds really fast and nice. And there's a few other little things that I do on it, which I've been playing with. I'm no expert on it. I've just been playing around with it, getting the sound that I like. I'm going to show you what I've been doing with it. If you've got any tips and tricks, things that I've missed, you know, I don't know it all. Stick it in the comments below. I'd love to know and uh, share that with you and the community that's in here that are all sharing their knowledge together. So it's the newfangled audio Elevate. So let's jump in. I'll play the track. You know the track. I play it all the time. It's an easy one to do because it's, uh, it's not offensive to anyone. And I'll just play through and I'll start talking to you about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So here we are inside. Now, let me work from the left to right. There's like meters here. So you've got peak and RMS. You can check those out. Then we have the uh, the in and out. These are just this is just so you can see all the metering. These three different areas: gain reduction, filter bank. We'll get onto those in a minute. You've got these little things that turn stuff on and off, so you can see uh, different stuff. We get used to that. Up here, there is a uh, an active and a so a bypass essentially. And there's this little lev uh, match level here, which is really cool. So what that is, that's a unity gain. You get that one-to-one -one on the Pro L2, and that's what you use on there. So what essentially what it does, it matches the input level to the output level so that you're not fooled just by it being loud. You can hear what it sounded like before and after, so you can kind of A-B between the two. Super helpful because then you can tell whether you're over pushing it or exactly what the parameters are doing to hear exactly what's going on really helpful so i'm leaving that in for the moment up here you've got a few different uh these are like different skin colors basically newfangled modern and twin turbo so i've been using the modern it's kind of the standard uh output here you've got manual or um automatic so uh you can put it on manual and put it to like uh minus 0.2 if that's what you want to do uh, or point 0.1, whatever you want to do. So basically you can you can do that there. Again, RMS and peak meters at the end. So let's dive into the juicy bits. You've got the main parameters here. You can see there's four different sub-modules. A filter bank, a limiter, transients and clipper. Now these all work. You can have them on or off, obviously. Uh, or, but with the main parameters here, this is where you can kind of select exact sort of what's going on. So if you can look here, limiter sort of links up to the limiter EQ, transient emphasis that goes up to the transient section and obviously clipper goes to the clipper. So you've got true peak here, you can have that on or off depending what you want. Now you can, the great thing about this thing, which this is what I love about it, is you can select how many bands of limiting you have and which essentially means also how many bands of EQ you have. 
So what this is going to do, you can make it so it's adaptive to the sound as it's going, depending on how many bands you have selected. So a lot of um, limiters are just one band, so everything's controlling it. So you don't get, if you've got loads of bass going in, that's going to control the limiter, and then you're not going to be able to get as much level because the bass is sucking up too much level. But with this, if you say, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do 26 bands, that's, that's cool, but not for this demo. Let's just stick to like 10 bands just to keep it easy. And what this is doing, you can see if you go into where it says filter bank here, these are all the different crossover points that you can select and move around. So you can see each band has its own section. So if I move that, I can move that crossover to there, I can move that crossover, and then I can also um, go back to normal. Or I can do custom ones where I mess around with them myself. So this is just a way of splitting up the frequencies so that you don't get stuck with just standard like top and all that. It's kind of think of it like a like a multi-band compressor, loads of them all together. So it kind of can move, but you know, if you've got loads of them on, it can really move nicely with it. But you, you'll see it does control it quite well. I mean, you're coming in quite loud when you're at this stage of the game. So you've got limiter gain here. So obviously how much you want to put on and you can turn it on and off. You've got the speed, how fast or slow you want the uh, limiter to react. And then you've got a ceiling. And because I set the ceiling up there, I guess that changes it there. I don't know if I haven't tried that before. So no, it doesn't. But you can set that ceiling, which I'm guessing will be how much you want to limit. And then you've got the adaptive speed and adaptive gain for these two. Then you go on to the... Uh, then we go on to the transients, so you can have them really emphasized or you can have them quite clean. So that's really something you've got to use your ears for, the transient section. You've got to hear what's going on, see how fast they're hitting and see what you're getting out of them. And then we've got a clipper, which essentially has just got a drive on it and then you can change the shape of the clipper. I love the UI on this, it's really cool, isn't it, the way it does that. If we go into, we don't need to worry about the filter bank because we've set that up with 10, we're just gonna go with the standard stuff at the moment. But obviously you need to use your ears, you can move it around, there's a lot to do with it. You go into the limiter, so I'm putting a bit of gain on and we've got some adaptive gain. So here, it, this is where the cool bit is, is that you can change the amount of gain you're putting on each channel. So this is working as an EQ effectively because you're moving the amount of level you've got. And the great thing about this, say you've got loads of bass coming in, you can actually just turn the bass down a bit so that it's kind of rebalancing the mix a little bit at this section. The reason that's good is because when you're mastering a lot of the time, the limiters, when, they're, when you're pushing into a limiter, it can start sounding quite bright. So with this, you can actually just you know, nudge the level down by half a dB or something at the last moment so that it's just not going bright. So your before and after can sound pretty similar to each other rather than having to compromise on your EQ before this to get this to work right. Because normally when you're limiting, you'll EQ into the limiter because you, you need to consider, okay, it, the limiter is going to be really bright or, the, or the, there's too much bass, so I'm going to have to not put as much bass on. But then you might then want to turn the limiter off to leave the mix really dynamic, say for a streaming master, and then you haven't got, you know, it sounds totally different. So really this way you can ad adapt this at this point so that you can, you don't have to compromise for the, the more dynamic version if you want to do a, a smash version that sounds the same. Hope that made sense. It kind of did and didn't in my head. So I'll play the track. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'll do a little active and stuff so that you can see what's happening and you'll be able to hear, you'll be able to see exactly what's going on with this, uh, and then you'll see exactly what I'm saying, where you can hear, with this track in particular, there's a kick that's quite heavy, it's quite a strong kick, so I'll just sort of tweak that down a little bit, and you'll hear that it gets a little bit bright, so I'll, I'll move those down, but you can then hear that it just works so well of just keeping it the before and after together. So uh, let's go for that.
So you can see just from me playing around with that how you can really affect the low end and you can really kind of save it, save it towards the end so that you can change some EQs around and really get it sounding you know, a little bit different towards after you've done all of your EQs and stuff. Obviously this is pretty flat so it's still quite moody in the low end. I probably would have tightened that up and smashed it about a bit in the low end to, to get that tighter before it got to this stage. But just kind of, it's good because at least it will show you the extremes of what you can do. So it is a great limiter. Newfangled audio, Elevate, check it out, I love it. I'm gonna be using it a lot because I think it's brilliant of what you can, you know, the manipulation of the stuff you can do. Now I talk a lot about like, you know, processing in this and I'm talking a lot about really changing stuff. So if you're wanting to learn exactly how to master the way that I master every single day, then there is a link below to a course that I run. So if you wanna check that out, Hit the link below, that'll take you there. Great to have you on board. Till next time, bye.